So welcome to another unboxing video from theplayers8.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're taking a look at Undaunted Normandy, as designed by David Thompson, Trevor Benjamin, and this is from Osprey Games. And this game just came out this summer. We've uh, uh, David's been demoing it at a bunch of cons we've been at. Uh, this is a light two-player war game. Um, it's actually a, like a deck-building game. And then it's card-driven actions that uh, do some tactical stuff on a board. What we'll do, it comes in a small little package, we'll open it up, kind of show you what it is. This is a very approachable and fast playing game um, that you can play with almost anyone. Um, so we have here some advertising from Osprey Games. And then we have the first thing here, we have the scenario book and the rule book. So we'll start with the rule book. It's, this is a small rule book. It is 22-ish pages, although some of this is just some reference. Really, it's about 18 pages of rules, but the rules themselves are not daunting anyway, and there's actually a lot of empty space in this. Um, but it's very nice. This is full gloss. Everything's diagrammed out and decently well explained. There's no player aids in this, but if you need to have reference, this page has all the actions on it. Uh, that's that's basically all you'll need. All you need to do is have this out for the first couple games. Then you figure all of it out, and everything is very much done by memory. The scenario book. So the game comes with twelve scenarios, and each of these scenarios shows you the map setup with all the different counters on it as well, and then it tells you your force composition, a bit of historical detail, and your objectives, how many victory um, points you need basically. So there's a whole bunch of those. And if you saw at the back here, there's this kind of a scenario table. You can play a campaign through as you take the same squad through all the different missions. You can do that um, for just a bit more kind of theme and story going through. Uh, everything else fits in this really nice insert, which is nice. A lot of inserts are just generic. This one's custom made for this game. So we'll start with this huge stack of terrain tiles. I think there's 18 of these-ish. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Yes. So these are really big, thick cardboard, and they're all double-sided as well. So you have your nice river on side thirteen A, and that this is just an identifier for which tile it is. The only really other information is this defensive value. This provides you no cover as you're wading through a river. On the other side, for example, you have a small building with an outhouse. What's on here is just a picture, basically. But this one, again, is a defensive value. Oh, this provides one. Lie on a field, no terrain. No defensive bonus. Being in some woods, three defensive bonus. That's very good. But all these are double-sided. There's a different bunch of variety, but they all have that nice green, lush, Normandy feel to them. So there's a whole bunch of those. And then we have two decks of cards. And we'll get back to these. There's obviously American and German. You get four ten-sided dice. And this game uses ten-siders uh, for combat resolution. And there's two stacks of large... And this is all these large um, round counters. They do come... Um, on sprues, you do have to punch them all. I did it before because we've actually played this game a few times. Um, so the American ones, so you have here just a cool illustration. This is machine gunners. They've got a four defensive value and they're from B squad. And the reverse side is just their pinned side, that's all. So this is the scouts from C squad with a five defensive value. You've got some mortar section for your platoon. Here's your Rifleman from B Squad. They have a four defensive value. And that's what these are. They're these are, but there's also some snipers here as well. So you have your platoon sniper, your platoon mortar, and everything else is squad-based machine gun scouts and riflemen. That's what, uh, that's what's in this. This is an initiative marker, the Americans and the Germans. And then the Germans have all the same counters. They're identical, they're just gray with different illustrations on them. So this is 
the force composition that you get in the box is identical. However, um, what you play within a scenario is not typically identical. Usually they're asymmetric forces that you have. The game just gives you an equal stuff for each side. The rest of these tokens are a mixture of, I'll show you here, um, the binoculars are scouted markers, and then you flip them over, and they have a little cross on them. These are control markers, and there's an American version of those as well. And then there's some kind of objective markers. Oh, the whichever tile has this on is worth three victory points. This one's only worth two. Those are open. And then there's a couple of admin markers to tell you, oh, if you have snipers and mortars, this is where they enter on the board. Or all my reinforcements come in on this, whatever tile this is placed on. And this is a German version. And this is a the German versions of all those. So there's a couple little markers there just for admin of where your reinforcements enter the map, basically. And But the crux of the game are these cards. And we'll take a look at the German ones. So the cards have a value in the top, which is used for determining initiative. These are Fog of War cards. So these are just kind of blank. They don't do anything other than gum your hand up. We have here the Scouts from A Squad. And you draw it, he has a six initiative. So if you want to play this for initiative, you just look at the number. That's a good number, you're probably gonna win initiative. Or you keep it in your hand so that you can activate that A scout on your board. So if you play it for one of the actions, you can either do a scout two, which means he can move onto two tiles and put out those binocular scout markers. Or he can attack one, which means he can attack anywhere, but he rolls one dice, which is okay, it's not great. He can recon. When you recon, if you have a Fog of War in your hand, you get that out of the game, you put it back into the supply, so it's not going through your deck constantly messing up your hands. Or you can play it for Conceal. Conceal means you take cover, so you basically force the Americans to put a Fog of War into their deck. So you, you can either clean your hand, or you can mess theirs up with the scouts. That's kind of the thing that they can do there. We have Riflemen. They can move, just a regular move, and attack, regular attack. They can control as well. So scouts can't control, but riflemen can. They kind of flood the tile. They can take control of a scouted area. And, you know, you have to have control to claim the victory points, basically. Scouts, you have a machine gunner. He can move one. He can attack with two dice, which is much better. He can also suppress. He can chuck four dice. He doesn't do any damage, um, but he can, he can pin units, which flips them over, which means they can't do anything until you unflip them, basically. Scout squad leaders. So squad leaders are used to bolster, which means you can pick up cards from your supply and put them into your deck. So if you need more rifleman cards, you put more into your deck. Um, inspire means you can replay a card you've already played. The platoon sergeant can bolster, but if you look here, bolster, he can only pick up A cards because he's squad leader for A squad. The platoon sergeant can pick up any cards from the supply and put them into your deck. You can also command two, so you do either or of these. Command two means you just draw two cards, you get a bigger hand, you can do more stuff. Um, let's see, we've got squad leader B, rifleman B, scout B, platoon guide. He can bolster one or guide one. Guide one means he can move any unit one space. Normally, you, you're restricted to kind of what cards you have. He kind of gives you a wild move on anyone. The snipers attack with three dice, which is very nice, and they stalk one. They can move anywhere. Normally, you have to have an area scouted to be able to move into it. He can just move in because it's just one guy. He does what he wants. And if you look, the three sniper cards are all different. Sometimes the differences are subtle, uh, but they are there, which is nice. The artwork's really cool on these. And the mortar, he can target. He has to do a um, kind of a spotting round. And then he does a blast one, which is just a, an attack on everyone in Hex. Normally you have to target uh, an individual counter. Machine gunners, riflemen, squad leaders. But the, it's just great artwork. It's fun to play with these. And the Americans have all the same types of cards. Uh, but you'll see their artwork is obviously a little bit different. So you have some scouts. Squad, platoon sergeant. And we got the squaddy. Scouts, squad leaders, scouts. 
the riflemen. Again, the poses might be the same, but they got slightly different faces, different uh, helmet. He doesn't have his webbing. Just subtleties that make this game just fun to play with, and I think the artwork's really cool when you're playing through. But the game plays, you just have um, four cards in your hand. You play one each face down for initiative, and then you've got three cards to play with to move guys on the board. And if you look back at the scenario book, you know, some of the maps are fairly large, some of them are fairly small and tight, and you're just moving your counters along the board, taking control of objective areas, trying to shoot each other, and that's it. It's a real, real simple game. Each game takes about, usually around half an hour-ish, uh, sometimes a little bit longer for some of those bigger ones. Sometimes it can be much quicker if you have terrible card draws or you get absolutely hosed or you play it really poorly. But uh, it's a very quick, light playing game. Um, you can play this with almost anyone. It says 14 plus on the box, but you could play this with with kids who are kind of, you want to maybe help get into wargaming or use in a teaching situation. Really neat game. You, it's this little card building. You start with a certain amount of cards. You're trying to get more cards into your deck so you can activate your units more often and do more stuff with them. Really fun game. Uh, but just want to show you, that's where you get in the box. Nice tight package from Osprey Games. Um, and you'll see the review for this one coming very soon as well. So appreciate you guys tuning in. And I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com.